guys, Marty Schwartz here with Marty Music Still. And I'm hanging out in Nashville with my friend, an awesome guitar player and musician, Grace Bowers. Always an honor to have you here, Grace, and it's great to see you. It's great to see you too. <laughs> How long ago did we shoot our last video? Like a year and a half, two? Yeah, pro probably about a year and a half ago now. Okay. So I've seen a lot of growth and I've watched you mostly just through the internet like everyone else, but you've had some amazing opportunities and gigs and appearances and, and jams with, with super famous people. It's been an amazing uh, ride the, that last year and a half of watching all these amazing things you're doing. So congratulations. I'll tell the people right out there that it, the, you're definitely not a some corporate put together a plant or something, you know? <laughs> People that are jealous would love to imagine that you're like, man, you know, you came out of a lab, um, you know? People have said that before. Yeah, <laughs> no, I, I know, because I know the types of jealousies out there, because I've been out and doing the art and music thing for so long. I already, I, I already know what people are saying without having to see it, which means you're doing something right. You know, and part of the responsibility of being out there is being able to deal with that BS, you know, and like not let it affect you, which at you're 17 now. Yeah. Much easier at 47 than 17. <laughs> OK, so real quick. What's more fun, playing or or red carpets? <laughs> playing. I, I think uh, all this red carpet stuff I've been doing lately. I was just kidding. Of course, playing is more fun, but I'm just roasting you a little bit. But but I'm so proud to like see you show up in these places and you like met. You've met all these idols, like amazing icons. You've met Eddie Vedder. Yeah. You met. You were just like at with Boy Genius, who's huh? like amazing now. Like, and then you have your own band now, right? Hodgepodge. The Hodgepodge. What's the big show that's coming up? Well, the biggest festival we're playing, we're playing a lot of festivals this summer, but the biggest one will be Bottle Rock, which I'm super excited about. Is Pearl Jam playing that? Yes. Who else is playing that? Uh, Stevie Nicks. Wow. Yeah. Awesome. Um, I could see you getting up there with her. Oh, I would die if I did. And then you jammed with Lainey Wilson, who's just out the biggest thing in country music yeah. now. How did that gig come about? I mean, her team has been trying to set us up for a while. I was supposed to do this um, CMT thing with her and I got booted off of it for being 17 or actually I, was, I think I was 16 at the time actually so um what <laughs> yeah they have a 18 plus rule which I I understand but New Year's finally worked out and I got to play with her it was amazing how many it was like 100 200,000 people or something 215,000 <laughs> Did you play a couple songs, right? I played two songs with her. One was on TV, but you played two songs? Yeah. Were you like really nervous before coming out or no? No, I kept um, I kept expecting myself to get nervous. I got there at 11 o'clock and didn't leave till like one in the morning. So I was there for a while <laughs> and the entire time I was like, okay, when like I'm gonna get nervous at some point. Right. And I never did, it just, Never hit me. Did they tell you the songs beforehand so you could listen and like? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I had some time to learn them and just like practice some. Yeah. Some rip rippers over it. <laughs> you played Clapton Crossroads Festival since I saw you. That was another huge one. You're sitting in with all kinds of people here. You've played at the Ryman at least a few times, yeah. right?
What's like a, you wake up in the morning and do you just, do you just kind of jam more? Like when, or do you have things that you practice? Sometimes there is, cause there is a big difference between playing and practicing. Sometimes I do more playing than practicing. I think everyone does. <laughs> yeah. I don't just wake up and start playing. I have to like, <laughs> I have to like convince myself like, all right, I'm going to, I'm going to sit down. I'm going to sure. practice what I need to practice. Cause I mean, I can play all day long. But... Sure. Sure. I can tell. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You're doing like these little fast little flurries. Uh -huh. So is that just your playing's just naturally progressing the more you play, you think? Or are there some things... Well, my, like... my picking has gotten a lot better. Okay, that's good. Because um, a really important thing is no one told me how you're supposed to hold a pick. Me neither. So for the longest time, I would hold it like this, which is fine. I mean, I've seen people play like this before, uh -huh. but if you just tuck it in like that, okay, it's made everything... It made, like, all the difference for me, and it just... Okay. I was just like kind of like watching other people play. I'm like, oh, that looks different than what I'm doing. Yeah, yeah. And then it felt more natural anyways when I switched, but I think the biggest difference is probably my picking. What about some of the scale stuff? Like you're definitely pushing yourself out of the pentatonic. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm trying that. to. I'm yeah, trying no, of course. to. <laughs> I, I mean, I'll tell you 30 years later, I still, the pentatonic is the thing to keep practicing. Yeah. It really is. Tell me about that amazing guitar. Yeah, this is my... 1961 Gibson SG. Wow. That um, someone gave it to me actually. Really? Yeah, two years ago. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't me. <laughs> who gave it to you? Um, uh, the guy who owns Brandy Melville, which is a clothing company. Oh. Which um is pretty random, but they had a big studio underneath their store in New York, and he invited me to come do some session stuff. Like we just got some musicians and did some covers. And um, at the end of it, I, I was playing all different guitars and I kind of gravitated towards this one. Nice. And at the end of it, he hands me a guitar case. I'm like, what is this? And he's like, you can keep it. Wow. And it, it was this guitar. How amazing is that? I almost started crying. <laughs> so, I mean, nothing's cooler than that. I, I've had that happen to me just only a couple of times. But yeah, it's like all of a sudden I feel, feel more connected to the guitar because there was such a sentiment behind it uh -huh. that it like bonds you to the instrument more, I think. Totally. Grace, what was one of the first riffs you ever learned on guitar? One of the first riffs I ever learned was um, Wipeout. <laughs> Except when I was first learning it, it sounded more like this. Me too. I couldn't even play <laughs> that well. There's, there's video proof of that. My dad, who just played a little bit of guitar, showed me that as well. That is so funny. But the one I got better was... The old finger switch, string switch. What's coming up? So you've got these really cool festivals, Bottle Rock. Mm -hmm. Where is that again? Uh, Napa. California. Ooh, yeah. Fancy. <laughs> That's in May? Yep. So any other summer stuff coming up? The ones that have been announced are um, Bear Shadow, North Carolina, Exponential, doing Levitate, Telluride, Blues and Brews. That's a, I think I played the very first one of those. No way. In Colorado? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think it was the very first Blues and Brews Tell Telluride gig that they ever did. Wow. And it was a band that I, I was in for uh, like five years. I just want to thank Grace again. You guys check the links below. If you don't already follow her on her social medias, Instagram, go see her at Bottle Rock in Napa in May and other festivals you're going to see her or with Lainey Wilson yeah. or with Eddie Vedder, you know, who knows? Who knows what will happen? The sky's the limit. So we'll see you on a red carpet soon. Very soon. <laughs> <laughs>